My mission is to inspire people everywhere with the power and insights that statistics can bring to us all. Today, in our age of open government, the possibilities are greater than ever because more and more official data is now accessible to all of us. The city of San Francisco is blazing a trail, opening up its data on practically everything. Even the police department is releasing all its crime reports. Designers Mike Magurski and Eric Rodenbeck have created an interactive map to both analyze and visualize San Francisco's crime data. Crime spotting is a map of crime reports from the San Francisco Police Department uh, showing you know, dots on maps uh, for citizens to be able to see patterns of crime around their neighborhoods in San Francisco. The map is not just about individual crimes, but about broader patterns that show you where crime is clustered around the city, which areas have high crime and which areas have relatively low crime. We are here at the top of Jones Street on Knob Hill. Quite a nice neighborhood. What the crime maps show us is the relationship between topography and crime. Basically, the higher up the hill, the less crime there is. You cross over the border into the flats. Essentially, as soon as you get into the kind of lower-lying areas of Jones Street, the crime just skyrockets. The Uptown Tenderloin District. It's one of the oldest and densest neighborhoods in San Francisco. This is where you go to buy drugs, uh, right around here. We see lots of uh, aggravated assaults, lots of auto thefts. Basically, the huge part of the, of the crime that happens in the, in the city happens just right in this five or six block radius. If you've been hearing police sirens in your neighborhood, you can use the map to find out why. If you're out at night in an unfamiliar part of town, you can check the map for streets to avoid. If a neighbor gets burgled, you can see, is it a one-off or has there been a spike in local crime? If you commute through a neighborhood and you're worried about its safety, the fact that we have the ability to turn off all the nighttime and middle of the day crimes and show you just the things that are happening during the commute is a statistical operation. But I think to people that are interacting with the thing, it feels very much more like they're just sort of browsing a website or you know, shopping on Amazon. They're, they're looking at data and they don't realize they're doing statistics. What's most exciting for me is that public statistics is making citizens more powerful and the authorities more accountable. We have community meetings that the police attend. And what citizens are now doing are bringing printouts of the maps that show where crimes are taking place. And they're demanding services from the police department. And the police department is now having to change how they police how they provide policing services because the data is showing what is working and what is not. What's happening with the crime data here is a sign of things to come. The relationship between government and citizens will change wherever countries join the free data revolution. I think our dream government data analysis project would really be focused on live information, on stuff that was being reported and pushed out to the world over the internet as it was happening. You know, trash pickups, traffic accidents, buses, and I think through the kind of stats gathering power of the internet, it's possible to really begin to see the, the workings of the city displayed as a unified interface. To find out more about the joy of stats, visit the Open University's Open Learn website. <laughs>